Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about how to go about internationalizing your game. So we're going to go through the process of talking about how we can use keys and CSV files to translate your text. We are going to talk about how we can play different audio based off of what our locale is set to. We're also going to talk about how flexible the locale system actually is. And we're actually going to load an entirely different scene based off of what locale you're in. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to translate your user interface using Godot's translation system. Now you'll see I have an empty user interface here. And the reason why is because we don't really need to have a user interface to actually set up our translation. Thankfully, a lot of that's done using uh, CSV files. So if you've never actually made a CSV file, there's a lot of add-ons and things like that that allows you to make them. But in my case, I'm just going to use LibreOffice Calc to make a CSV file. Now, if you have uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, both of those will also do just as well. And if you don't have either one of those, you can also use Visual Studio Code with the CSV add-on that will actually allow you to create CSVs as well. CSV stands for comma separated value. So all of the values are separated by commas, if that makes sense. So with that out of the way, let's talk about how we can actually make a CSV file. So in Godot, we have two major sections in our CSV. You have the A column and the one row, okay? The A column is where all of your keys are located and the number one row is where all of your languages are located. So for instance, you could set up a key say key underscore test, let's say, and you could say this is test test, let's say is the, the words that we're going to try to use. And let's say we want to do this in English. So we'll say EN. Okay. And you'll see that we have EN test test and key test, right? Now let's say we want to do Japanese, right? So that's J A, which is their, their language code. And I believe, I don't know Japanese very well, but thankfully Google Translate's gonna come in handy here. So if that's wrong, let me know. But there we go, we can just paste that in. And then let's say we wanna do another one, let's do Arabic. So A-R, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this from Google Translate as well. So you can see that we have this nice little simple key value structure. So if we wanted to, we could also say key underscore hello and we could say hello and then we could say something like this for japanese right code i believe that's konichiwa is my guess and this for arabic just like that now of course i could be wrong with the arabic letters i don't know arabic but uh, hopefully that's correct and that's kind of how we can make our own keys so now the question is how can we save this out well if we go up to file and save as, and of course, just to let you guys know, you guys can do all of the different language codes you want and all of the different key values that you want as well. So you're not bound in by two or three values. You can put hundreds of them if you want to. You can even go down to regional codes and actually change things as well. Now, in this case, I'm only just gonna do the three with the two keys here. But if we wanna save this, we can click on an ODF right here and change it to CSV, which is right here, text CSV. And we can change this from untitled to just translation. Now it doesn't have to be named translation, but in my case, that's what I'm going to name it. Uh, Godot automatically reads CSV files as language packs. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we'll hit save and it's going to say, hey, you're not saving an ODF. Do you, are you sure you want to do that? And yes, I do want to use text CSV format and we'll just say that's fine. And you'll see that when we click on Godot, it's going to import it. And now suddenly we have these weird little language packs here. Okay. And 
the question you might be asking is how do I know what language packs I have and how do I know what language packs I can make? Well, that's a really good question. How we can figure that out is if we go up to project, project settings, you can see that we have translations right here, A-R-E-N-J-A, -E okay? And if these aren't here, you can just get rid of them like this and click add, and then you can select them just like this and hit open and they will be added. Now, if we come up to our locales filter, you can see here's all of the region codes. So if you're looking for Arabic, you can see AR. You can see that they have Arabic United Arab Emirates, which is AR underscore AE. Same thing with um, Arabic Egypt, AR underscore EG, uh, Arabic India. So you can actually really get nice and in-depth on specific regions if you have special things you want to say for each region. For instance, sometimes in English, we have, based on where you are in the United States, our entire language can be almost different because that's kind of how we approach things. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, that's how you guys can get your little code. So if you just did BN underscore IN, you would be doing uh, Bengali in India. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if we hit close, how can we actually have this reflect on our interface with our text? Well, if we click on our user interface here, we right click, add in a child node, and add in a label. And this works for anything. It doesn't have to be a label. I'm just using a label for this tutorial. So if we make this about yay big, we go to our inspector, we go to our text, and we type one of our keys, which in this case, I'm going to pull my key test. I will copy that and I will paste it. And then I'm going to duplicate my label and just drag it down a tiny bit. And instead of key test, I believe it's key hello. So we'll copy that, select our label, click paste, and then let's control S and save our scene. If we hit play and we select our scene as our current, you will see that it says test, test, and hello. And the reason why is because it defaults to English being first. And then after that, I'm not sure what the next language is, but it usually defaults to whatever your first language is right here, which in my case is English. Now you can see it says test, test, and hello. Something to keep in mind, if this doesn't match, if there's a carriage return or something like that, then it fails. So it has to match it exactly. So that's something to keep in mind. It needs to be perfect. So make sure that you don't have any trailing spaces or any spaces before it or anything like that, or it will not work. Also, you cannot have any words in here either. You can't just say like key test, blah. That's not going to work because the entirety of that text needs to be just your key. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now that we have that, how can we change our languages? It might be your question. Well, if we come up to our control node, we add a child node and we add in a button. Let's call this button English. And then let's duplicate this button three times. One for Japanese and one for Arabic just like that. So if we come up here and we type Japanese and one for Arabic, just like that. All right. Now, if we hook these buttons up and I'm going to name this one to English, Japanese and Arabic. And if I hook these up to my control node, and if I come up here and I create a script and let's just call it language manager, and then come into our English node and connect our button down, go into our Japanese button down and go into our Arabic button down and connect it to our control node. So now what you will see is you will see English, Arabic, and Japanese, just like that. So now how can we set our locale? because that's one of the big things that we need. Well, with Godot, we have this thing called a translation server. So we'll type translation server dot set locale, and you can set your locale. So in my case, since this is English, I'm gonna set the locale as EN. 
since this is Arabic, translation server dot set locale a r if i remember correctly and then on japanese button down we can say translation server dot set locale j a just like that so now if we hit play if we click on japanese it attempted to change it, but it looks like it has a problem. If we click on Arabic, it attempted to change it, but it looks like it has a problem. My guess is our font does not support Japanese characters or Arabic characters for that matter. They support English, but not the other two. So what are some things that we can do to fix that? Well, that's where Google Fonts comes in. So you can come over to Google Fonts. If we come up here and search fonts and we type in Japan, you'll see we have Noto Sans Japan. So let's grab that and we will download that font family. There we go. And then we'll also do the same thing with typing in Arabic, just like that. And you'll see we have a couple of Arabic choices. Let's pick this one and download that family. And then let's do the same thing with English. So we'll just type, well, it can't find my fonts. So let's go to Google fonts and type in Roboto right here. And we'll pull down Roboto as well. And that'll give us all sorts of fonts that we can play with. Now, if we go to our downloads, you'll see I have, I've tested quite a few fonts here, but if we grab Roboto, Arabic and Japanese. So let's open up the Roboto zip. So let's right click the Roboto zip and extract it and extract it. And then if we do the same thing with our Japanese font, extract it just like that. And then if we choose our Arabic font and we extract it just like that as well. Okay, so now that that's done, let's grab our Arabic font and let's import it into Godot. So we'll open up Godot real quick, just like that. We'll drag it in, there we go. And then we'll go to our Japanese font right here and we'll grab our Japanese font black and then we'll grab Roboto and we'll put Roboto black in as well. Now, if we come into Godot and we click on our label, and we open this up just a tiny bit and scroll down, you'll see there's a section here called theme overrides. And this is where we can actually use our font. So if we go into our theme overrides, we go into fonts, we click our check mark on our fonts, and you will see that we have an empty here. If we change that to new dynamic font, and we scroll down, you will see that we have lots of options here. But if we click on font, and under font data, we have empty. So let's drag our Roboto black into there, okay? And now let's come to our fallback. And fallback is where we fall back into a font. If this font can't resolve the symbols that we're trying to resolve, it's gonna fall back into another font, basically. So if we come to our fallback and we drag in Japanese like that, and then we drag in Arabic just like that, and that should, hopefully do it for us. So now if we hit play and we click Japanese, it didn't work. And if we click Arabic, it also didn't work. And now I don't know why it's not working. Okay. So after doing a lot of testing, I just figured out what it is. And, um, I ran through, I did a bunch of testing and I found out that I just didn't save it in the right format. I saved it in a CSV format, but the format I saved it in was not ASCII text. It was in regular text. Apparently I missed a checkbox somewhere in the export settings inside of um, LibreOffice. If I hit save as, and I save this as translation to Okay, so I picked the wrong character set. I should have picked Unicode 16, probably. 
me see if Unicode 16 will work. If I drop in Unicode 16 and I save it, does that make it work? Yes. So basically the gist of the issue is that when I exported my stuff out, I didn't export it out in the proper um, format. When you export, you need to use the Unicode 16 to get the proper um text format it just came in as a bunch of question marks and that's basically the reason why this didn't work so let's go and um do our testing let's go back to godot and let's grab i think i'm just gonna grab my untitled one csv i'm gonna copy that i'll drop that into my translation.csv and then I will go back to my localization tutorial section here, and I'm going to delete my CSV and my translation to CSV. And I need to close my thing here and get rid of them just like that. And when I open up Godot, it should delete my previous translation files. I don't think it did, so let me clean that up. All right, so. Now that we have our fallbacks in place, and now that we have our CSV correctly put together, if we hit play, you will see that when we click Japanese, it shows Japanese. It doesn't show anything here because we haven't uh, put in our fallbacks. And if we click on Arabic, you'll see it works here. And also it doesn't work here because we haven't put in our fallbacks. So if we click close and we come over to our label two, and we come down to our theme overrides and we go to our fonts, font, empty, new dynamic font. We click on our font and we drag our Roboto black, our fallback, which would be Japanese and our next fallback, which would be Arabic. If we hit play and we did everything correctly, when we click on Japanese, it'll switch over to Japanese as we would expect and Arabic as we would expect. And that took way more debugging than it should have. So next, let's take a look at how we can do some regional things. Like if we wanted to show a specific graphic or if we wanted to show, um, play a specific audio. So next we're going to play some audio and have it switch audio based off of the language that you've chosen. So if you and since I don't actually have any audio that works with multiple languages, because I don't know Japanese or Arabic, um, I'm just going to download this super dialogue audio pack. And I'm going to use uh, different people's audio just to switch between them. So that way we can at least load different audio based off of their language. Now, this audio pack obviously isn't mine, so if you guys want, I have a link in the description below to this audio pack that you can download as well. Now, I've already downloaded it, so if you need to, you can just click download now, and you can just say, uh, no thanks, just take me to the downloads, and then you can just download it from here, but I've already downloaded and extracted it. So it is located in my downloads, super dialogue, audio pack, audio files, and then here's a bunch of different audio files. So I'm just going to grab the greeting ones, the female, and I'll grab Karen. I will grab the first one from her. And let me go into Godot, and I'm going to pass this in just like that. And I'm going to go into female, Megan, I'm going to grab her audio file as well. And then I'm going to grab Alex as well. So now I have three different audio files right here that I can use for different languages. Now I know that they're not different languages, but for the sake of this, it will work. So first we'll need to add in some kind of audio player. So we'll type in audio and we will do a audio stream player. We'll just drop that in and then we'll just drag Karen in just like that. And we will have some kind of audio for, you know, us to hear. Now, here comes kind of where the magic happens. Okay. We can change what audio is going to play 
up here in our project settings. So if we head up to our project settings and go to project settings, we can click on localization and you'll see, of course, we have our translations, but we also have this thing called remap and remap allows us to remap our resources based off of locale. So if we click add for resources and we choose our Karen resource right here of her greeting, we can click open and then we can click on Karen and then remap by locale. So we can actually click here and then say, okay, I want Alex for Japanese. So we can click right here and we can choose Japanese. If we can find it Japanese right here. And then if we click add, we can add Megan for Arabic. So we can click this and find Arabic. It's right here, AR and hit close. Now we're going to need to be able to play that audio. So hit uh, right click your control, add in a child note, add in a button and let's hook this button. We'll just call it audio and we'll hook this button up to play audio. So we'll click node button down. We'll connect that to our control node and we'll just say dollar sign audio stream player dot play just like that. And then we'll go back to our 2d. We'll move this down here to play some audio. We'll just kind of make this about yay big. And now if we hit play and we hit play audio and actually I should probably turn on my desktop audio here so you guys can actually hear it. Hello. You will hear her say hello and I'll turn that down because that's probably way too loud for you. Hello. But if I hit Japanese, Hello. It will say hello in um, Alex voice. If I hit Arabic. Hello. It will say hello in Megan's voice. So that's kind of how we can do our own audio for different languages. So now how can we switch over things like maybe icons or perhaps doing stuff like really whatever you want, right? Um, and yes, I mean whatever you want. So the way that this works is it actually replaces the asset when you switch over your locale. So as long as you're referencing that object, it will change out that object. It can be anything. It can be a scene. It can be a uh, icon. It can be pretty much anything. And to prove it to you, if you close this, you duplicate your audio, drag this down. Let's rename this to spawn level let's disconnect this let's reconnect it to our control node and let's come back here real quick and change this to spawn level and then let's quickly uh come up here and create a pack scene so export var scene as a packed scene just like that. Let's come down here and let's just say var current scene is equal to, I believe I called it level. No, I called it scene. Okay. Scene dot instance. And then I'll just add child my current scene just like that. And if I come up here to my scene, I create a new scene. And I create a 2D scene and let's just go to 2D. Let's drag our icon into here to make a little icon guy, just like that. I will control S and I'll just call this node 2D. That's fine. And then let's come in here, duplicate our node 2D. Let's make it node 2D2. Let's double click on that. Let's duplicate our icon. Let's make two icons, control S. And then let's duplicate that scene again. And let's just say, Three, and I know I'm going pretty quick, but I, I really want to show this off in a, a timely manner. If we duplicate this and drag this guy down here, now we have three separate scenes, right? One, two, and three. Okay. Now here comes the cool part. If we go back to our control scene and then we go to our control node and we drag our node 2D into our scene, and then we go up to our project, project settings. And we go to our remap resources and we click add, and then we pick our node2d.tscn. And then we click on our node2d.tscn. We add in our node2d3 and our node2d2, 
right? So we have both of our scenes that we just made plus our additional scene here. And then we change the locale to Arabic and then Japanese for them. Just like that. When we hit close, if we hit play and then we keep our locale as English and we hit spawn, you will see we get one icon. But if we close this, reopen it, and then click Japanese and then click spawn, you'll see we get two icons. See what I'm going with here? So you can actually change your locale and completely tell it to load different resources. So you could have completely different character models. You could have completely different weapons. You could have completely different icons, audio, or really anything inside of Godot that is loaded can be adjusted using the locale system, which is really cool. So that's pretty much how you do localization inside of Godot. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video, as with all of my videos, was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll be more than happy to add it to my Trello board. I'm currently working on a 3.5 navigation tutorial that goes over 2D and 3D. And we're basically going to make a small horse that follows you around and uh, will gallop and catch up to you and things like that. So look forward to that one in the future. And hey, if you have any questions about this or comments, throw them in the comments below or jump on my Discord, links in the description, and I'll be more than happy to help you with any issues you might have. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks. <laughs>